Bay Area women shorts. Bay Area women shorts. Bay Area shorts. Bay Area women shorts. Bay Area women shorts. Bay Area shorts. Welcome. I'm Marcel Johnson, your host for this edition of Bay Area Women's Shorts, which is brought to you by executive producer, writer, and director, Teresa Earle, and co-directed by cinematographer, Kareem the director, Gedra. On today's episode, you'll meet Kadir Alamin, new business owner of TW Data Plus, who spent his early days in Marin County and was later raised in the Bay Area city of Oakland, California, in the 1990s, a time in which Oakland's homicide rate was at its peak and the nation's crack cocaine epidemic was front and center. Despite being raised in a two parent home with a father who was very instrumental in prison reform and an iman in the Muslim community, Qadir charted his own path, which may not have been in alignment with the Muslim upbringing. Let's get you over to curator, poet and facilitator Tiffany Banks as she has a conversation with Qadir Alamin. Welcome to Bay Area Women Shorts, Kadir. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Yes, I am excited to have this conversation with you. From what I've learned, you are an interesting fella. So we're going to ask you some questions okay. just to get to know more about you. You have an amazing story, and I think it's um, well worth sharing. So it's all right with you. I want to just dive in. Is that cool? Yep. So tell me, tell me about your teen years, and tell me what it was like being raised in West Oakland. So, teen years in West Oakland, that's mad. It's, it's like, uh, yeah, I don't even know where to start, but I guess like maybe seventh grade, seventh, well, really you're a teen when you turn 10, right? Oh, really? I mean, that's what I was taught. <laughs> okay, yeah. Cause you're in the tens, oh, yeah, no. but like it was always, it wasn't much different. It was a little different from elementary because... Maybe I was more aware, okay. mm -hmm. and it was like, but it was just treacherous. Thinking back, it was, mm -hmm. and it was fun more than the treacherous at ten part. For well, you? at thirteen, okay, or even at ten, it was like I wasn't thinking of none of that. Okay. Even though stuff happened that I could remember, mm -hmm. like when you was going through it, it didn't affect you, like you think it might mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah absolutely yeah so um i went to low elementary school no i went to lafayette elementary and i went to low junior high school so that was a big jump from elementary school it was mostly like kids in this one little area and then junior high it's like a whole different set of kids that you got to deal with and learn and it was just like the jungle huh yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of like a jungle. But we don't have gangs out here. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like people like to say gang activity, but it wasn't that. It's more just just rowdy kids, you know. And like, when you say treacherous, what do you, give me an example of what was treacherous for you at 13. Well, it was just like drugs, mm -hmm. you know, like in the neighborhood I lived in, it was just like drugs everywhere, everybody. It was just easily to make like people that made a living off of it. And some people, a lot of people got their lives destroyed by it. And it would have been easy for somebody to, for anybody, like somebody even, even my age, there's people my age that like smoke crap. Yeah. You know, but. Did you ever get caught up in anything like that? No, I never smoked crack. <laughs> <laughs> you were just caught up in the dynamics of nah, drugs. I did. Yeah. Like, but that was later on, you know, like, I finished high school, even though you're supposed to graduate in four, I did an extra year. Mm -hmm. But I was like, damn, I can't go out like that. I gotta walk the stage. So I just took it on the chin, did an extra year. And then after that, like, during the 12th grade, 11th grade, like the, you know, 16, 17, that's when I started just testing the waters of you know stuff that you just yeah. you're not really supposed to do like you know how it's a song that says everything that how come everything that they say is bad make you feel good 
you know, like um, your parents raise you a certain way, yeah. but you still your own person. And as much as your parents could tell you, the outside world probably weighs more on your choices and decision making than your in the house. Oh, that's scary. Yeah, I mean, it's a fact. Yeah. So, but at the same time, they can give you a few tools that you might not even know you using mm -hmm. and it'll take you a long way. So I was raised in a household to where they, they already know about the outside world. So they just kind of like, all right, well, all we can do is tell you this, that, and the other. Nigga, that's your choice, mm -hmm. you know, but I told you this, but everything is really your decision and your, all the consequences, mm -hmm. you going to build them, you know, whether it's a good one or a bad one, it's your actions wow. that lead up to it. So. so I learned that you were raised in a Muslim home. Did that contribute to your good and or bad choices in any way? I don't know about the bad choices. I wouldn't want to attribute my bad choices to a religion like yeah totally. so i think maybe i don't know maybe because of i was like the preacher's son oh, wow. so maybe that's the bad part where you know how you try to keep somebody in this straight path mm -hmm. so much that they like oh man oh, i'm about to break out real quick wow. so that could be the bad part of but other than that it's like all good yeah like the morals and just how I see myself and see the world. I'm kind of balanced. I don't really, like, growing up in Islam, bigotry. It's really no, I mean, even though in the book, like, all of these books, the religious books, they all go back and they use Abraham in all of these different times, like thousands and hundreds of years ago. Like, it was bigotry and misogynistic, mm -hmm. like, way of life. Extreme, no. Like, it was a lot more extreme. And I think that, like, I believe men and women have specific, specific, you know, duties, roles, purposes, all that. Yeah. So, I don't know. I think it just helped me to be, like, real well-rounded. Well yeah. Like, yeah. Do, you, do you believe that your, your household and your, your belief system helped to um, help you survive the treacherous environment that you grew up in? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because kind of like um, just certain things you was taught. Like, so we was taught it's only one God, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be things that like God had set out certain rules, a way of life for everybody. That's why you got different religions. It's like a religion is a language. Like this one is Spanish, this one is French, this one is English or Arabic or whatever, but it's still saying the same thing, right? All of them is saying, just worship God. It's only one God. So like, I think I, I told you this before. It was a story that I'll never forget about a dude named Bilal. And I don't even know if he was, oh no, he was Muslim. And it was like during the Crusades or something like that. And they like captured him and try to convert him to uh, idolatry, whatever the, the thing was back then. And they had this boulder on his chest and just had him on the ground. They put a boulder on his chest and was like, you know, say it's more than one God. And they kept on stacking the boulders and he just didn't do it and probably died. I don't remember exactly how the story went, but stuff like that just help me to know how far like if I do something wrong and I regret it damn that's my choice but I'm not gonna let somebody else make me do something wrong it, it wasn't my choice like yeah. I'm not gonna you know so that was put in me that was that seems to have been a very strong foundation for you tell me was there anything that you experienced or underwent that was trying um, that could have either uh, put you on a wrong path where you lost everything or um, ruined your life or even lost your own life um, that you overcame? Just it's too much leisure time. Mm -hmm. Like just hanging out too much, trying to please your friends, trying to be like 
having this friendship with a group of guys or a community or a, a kind of like an underworld type of thing and just having loyalty to that. That's where I almost lost, like, you know, I basically gave up on myself. Wow. And I just let what the streets thought kind of shape my, yeah, project, you know, my path. Like, oh, wow. you're supposed to do this, you're supposed to act like that, do this, that. Or, you know, as far as the government goes, and like, once you learn certain stuff about history, I just kind of like, oh man, I'm gonna give up. I'm gonna just do whatever I want to do because no, it's no rules anyway. Like, mm -hmm. but it ain't really like that. It's like that was being cynical. Yeah. Just thinking it's all bad. Like, and so that's where I kind of like went left, but I reeled myself back in. It's like, oh, I just reset my goals and stuff. Like, the fact that you were able to reel yourself back in, I think that's amazing yeah. and, and commendable. Um, how has your community in any way shaped or molded the man that you are today? Um, well, my community is big, mm -hmm. so it's like different parts of the community shape different parts of me. Mm -hmm. So, like, I would say between my high school community, uh, like my neighborhood where I lived and grew up at between like 85 and 2000 mm -hmm. and you know my family, like my blood family and my like the Muslim community, I think they just, I don't know, I was able to just get a lot, I, I was blessed to be smart and like just physically healthy, I don't know, God chose me to like I think of myself highly too like I try not to boast and brag but I'm like highly confident and I don't know where it came from that's amazing <laughs> like, but, because a lot of people can't see themselves in a powerful light and it seems as if that's something that you've mastered um, I think that's amazing and again something to be respected um, do you think that being a father or an uncle has perpetuated or strengthened you even more to be this strong black man yeah i think that put um it made me focus more like realize like dang you could do this and that or you should do this and that or you have to do this and that it like woke me up like all right you gotta use everything you got you gotta like and nothing gonna just luck up. You gotta just intentionally go and do everything you wanna I like do. That word intention. Yeah. That's an amazing word. That's yeah. like, that's the path, right? Yeah, you <laughs> have to like I mean you might end up everywhere, but your intentions is gonna take you to wherever you end up at. Yeah. Yeah. So Kadir, it's been a pleasure. I really want to thank you for being transparent, open, sharing some of the details of your upbringing, of your story. Of Again, this is um, a very small snippet of your story, and there's so much, but um, thank you so much for sharing. Is there anything that you'd like to share about your story? Um, anything you'd like to leave us off with that can help inspire um, younger individuals in high-risk communities? Oh, yeah. Just stay away from all of the like everybody pretty much should know right from wrong and if you didn't know it's not good to steal from people it's not good to lie to people you know uh and the most important thing you gotta have a dream and like make your dream realistic and i'm not to say that you know whatever is not realistic like you, but it's true though, yeah. you know, just be realistic and don't put yourself in a box. Like yeah. just, just get some goals and chase them. And like just dream I'm inspired. and work. <laughs> I'm inspired, I wanna go home and write out my goals and, <laughs> and make my dreams realistic. Again, thank you so much for being on Barrier Women Women's Shorts. Mm -hmm. Your story is inspiring. I love to hear more about it. Um, and I think that we will, so give me some love. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right. I appreciate it. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. There are negative stories in and from Oakland and Marin, but today, fortunately, 
you've been gifted with a story from the other side, the side of perseverance and positivity. That concludes this edition featuring Kadir Alamin. I'm your host, Marcel Johnson. Make sure you tune in next time for another enlightening edition of Bay Area Women Shorts. Bay Area Women Shorts. Bay Area Women Shorts. Bay Area Shorts. Bay Area Women Shorts. Bay Area Women Shorts. Bay Area Shorts. Hi, I'm Ray. I'm 12 years old. I live in San Leandro. And what I want to be when I grow up is a YouTuber. What's up? My name is Muniad Alameen, and I'm 15 years old. I go to high school in Marietta High. It's a high school in Georgia. And as a dream, I kind of plan on like basically just starting a family, living out my life to the fullest dying old age like or at least in my 60s at, at least um as a career i kind of plan on like either joining a big like gaming company rank games or a real estate worker slash architecture if that makes any sense at all but y'all get what i mean hello my name is marquise i go to oakland technical high school um, I'm 15 years old. I play football, and my dream is to own my own clothing brand. Xavier Harris. I go to Royal High School. I am 15 years old, and I want to be an animator when I grow up.